On July 27, 1981, at a Sears department store in Hollywood, Florida, a six-year-old boy named Adam was taken from his mom and dad and brutally killed. How does a mother and father continue living through such indescribable grief? Adam's father wrote a book in 1997 titled, Tears of Rage, From Grieving Father to Crusader for Justice. You've seen him as the host on America's Most Wanted. His name is John Walsh. John fought back by fighting crime in honor of his little boy and as a result has put many criminals behind bars. When tragedy strikes and grief sets in, how does a man process the hurt? Our guest today is pastor, author, and speaker Charles Burkeen. When Chuck lost his father, he went on with business as usual an hour after the funeral. He didn't even shed a tear over his loss, and it hit him many years later as he dealt with the suppressed grief. Today we will hear how he finally faced the grief and got through it in a healthy way. I'm Pastor Minor Labrador. Welcome to Old Man, New Man. Chuck, I am happy you're here. Welcome to Old Man, New Man. Thank you. We're talking today about a wounded man walking and living, and how is it that men deal with grief? We're glad you're here, and uh, you have a personal story to share with us. You're from Oregon. Right. And I understand that uh, you used to go hunting with your brothers. Yep, growing up, that's what you do in Oregon. Yes. And so what role did you play in the hunting process? I was the dog. Explain what the dog means. Well, the dog is the one who goes tromping through the brush to scare the deer off towards my brothers who are waiting for them to come out the other side so they could shoot them. And so you would run with the deer. You would chase them out, and they would shoot at them as you were running behind the deer. Yeah, I try and stay far behind. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's truly a miracle you're even here and made it to this age. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. We're so happy you're here with Old Man, New Man. And you have a tremendous testimony and so much to share regarding grief and how to overcome it. Uh, Chuck is the author of the book, A Place for Us Guys. And uh, I have read the book, exciting, wonderful book. So many good insights there. Tell us a little bit about your journey in understanding grief. Well, I think the first time that it uh, you know, it really hit me was when my father passed away when I was 17 years old. And I didn't know how to deal with it. Were you a rebellious 17-year-old? Oh, very much so. And so did you just disconnect? I mean... At the funeral, did you did you cry? Did you show pain? Anything? None of that. You know, at 17 years old, a young man feels like <clears throat> it's time to be a, a mature man, grown man now, and grown men don't cry and don't show emotion. And so my way of dealing with that uh, episode of my life was just to, to stuff any kind of emotion that was attached to it. And we men are notorious for compartmentalizing. Mm -hmm. We're just stuffing it down or putting it away so we don't have to deal with it. Right. And so from 17, you kind of put it behind you, didn't deal with it. How long did it take before you confronted the grief that you had in you? You know, it was probably at least another 10 years later, um, 12 years later. I was at, at college at that time and um, one of my college buddies had a, a class project to do a, a, a small group, small group Bible study. Okay. And in that Bible study the icebreaker was for each one of us to, to draw our kitchen table and then draw chairs around it and label 
each chair, you know, who would sit at that chair. Mm -hmm. And then we would go around the circle and we'd talk about, you know, each person around the chair. And so I talked about my mom, you know, she's a great lady. She was a, a Cub Scout pack leader. And, uh, you know, that was quite, a, quite an accomplishment for her to be able to deal with us little kids. Uh, my sisters, you know, my, my youngest sister, I got to see her right after she was born in the hospital. My uh, sister, just a little older than her, I, we were playing chicken with darts one day and I stuck a dart in her leg. And so I told all of these, <laughs> these things about my family yeah. until I got to the chair where my dad would sit. Oh, wow. And the mm. only thing I could think of to say is, he's dead. Mm. And all of a sudden, it's like I had this ticking time bomb in me for those 12 years. That All of a sudden, all that emotion just started coming out. And I'm thinking, I can't do this. I'm in front of all my, my school buddies. And I, I can't let them see me like this. But I couldn't stop it. So the emotion, all that that was hidden, just kind of came out. I was eventually able to, you know, toughen up again, toughen up again and, and stop the flow. But that's when it hit me that there's something deep down inside that I haven't dealt with. And it's causing me some trouble inside. You use that word, a ticking time bomb. Yes. So sometimes as men, we'll, we'll just put it down or away. But when we least expect it, it can come out. To, with you, it came out emotionally in the way of addressing the uh, tears, perhaps. Mm -hmm. But with some men, it could just be an explosion, a anger or other right. different types of expression. Yeah, we, we can stuff it, but we can never really put it away. It's always there waiting to come out in some unhealthy uh, form sometimes. So, Chuck, once it came out and you realized that it was there... How did you get beyond it? How did you deal with the grief? You know, I started going back and thinking, you know, about, well, what did I do when I was 17? You know, how, what did I do at the funeral? And what didn't I do at the funeral? And, and you know, how have I processed or not processed it? And started sorting through, you know, what was healthy, what was unhealthy. And from that point on, I was able then to uh, start looking at it in some healthy ways to deal with it. So Chuck, we, we talked about um, how men can take that negative energy and turn it in a positive way. Yes. So how did you do it and what could men do then? What are the steps that we could take to deal with grief? Well, one of the things that I did was I would use that experience than when I'm counseling with somebody else. At the time, I was a, a ministerial student working as a student chaplain at uh, a local hospital. And so by helping others to deal with their grief, I was really helping myself to deal with my grief. For, for me, it was uh, like a, a meaningful memorial. So you were able to empathize in a new way yes. with those that were grieving. Yes. And what else could we do? So if we take our story, we empathize with others, share it, mm -hmm. what are other ways to deal with grief? Uh, there are four, four key uh, tools that men can use. One is thinking, and that's where you know, we do the processing, where we um, read books on grief recovery. You know, we're, we're good with manuals. You know, how-to books. How-to <laughs> books. And so uh, what I recommend uh, for guys to do is get some manuals. You know, start reading through them. Read some of the promises in the Bible and, um, and start processing it just by studying it out. The next three things we don't do so well at. Uh, another way to deal with grief is through writing. You know, writing out our feelings, writing out our experience. Uh, but we're not naturally great communicators. No, we're not. And to even get to the first one of thinking and then writing, we have to get beyond the mentality that I am a rock. Right. Remember that song? Yes. I am an island and a rock feels, feels no, no pain, pain and an island never, never cries. cries. 
That is a myth. That is yeah. not true. We grieve deeply yeah. and we hurt and we feel the pain, but we need to process it. And so we need to get the how-to manual right. or learn how to process the grief. That's step one. Right. And then you said writing. Yeah. In, step two. In writing, what we're doing is, is a, it's, an, it's a form of expression to get what's inside to the outside. Now, men don't do that so well, but what I counsel men is, look, no one has to read it. You know, don't think that you're writing this for, uh, for other people to read. It's you're, just for yourself. It's just for you to get it out. Now, maybe you might want to share it with someone so they can understand what's, what's going on in your own heart, but it, you don't have to do that. But just the act of getting it out, you know, getting it from the inside to the outside in writing. And I, you know, I counsel guys, write, 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 and then go right to your shredder and <laughs> get but, rid but of it. Chuck, what if the guy doesn't like to write? Then um, talking. Talking. Yeah. But it's not easy for us guys to talk. No, that's not. Uh, you know, to sit down and communicate. That. So how can we talk? guy talk or in a guy kind of way that's not threatening let me demonstrate okay men are i you know i don't know what to do my you know my dad passed away and and i'm just not dealing with it well and uh boy it's just really affecting things mm. you notice the body language yes you looked away you yeah. changed but uh you communicated the grief or the pain you were going yeah. through. We're not always so comfortable with the face-to-face, -face, you know, eye-to-eye -eye contact. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes what men will do is, you know, we'll be busy working on a project together and talking towards the project, but to the person next to us. And that's more comfortable. It is more comfortable. I've seen that in my own life. Uh, my father was grieving through a loss that he went through some years ago. And he wasn't talking very much, but when we went to work, he started to share yeah. while working mm -hmm. what he was feeling. And I find that I'm similar. I do the same thing. And so working together, mm -hmm. focusing on the task, but with a friend next to us. Right. That's it, one way. Yeah, it's, it's a side by side. You know, we're here together. Um, it may be uncomfortable to you know, for you to see the emotion on my face. But if I'm looking away, you know, it can, I can get a little weepy. That's the fourth, okay. <laughs> fourth way, but, um, but it's more comfortable. But you know, that first and second one, I just want to emphasize to the viewers of Old Man, New Man, that it's okay to recognize that yes. you're hurting. That's right. Stop stuffing it right. and pretending it's not there. If it's there, deal with it get some counseling, get some additional help. But here are the steps. Think about it, get mm -hmm. a how-to book, how to deal with grief, right. how to process it, write it down or talk it out. Right. So what else do we do? Well, the fourth one is the, probably the hardest one and that is the actual weeping. Crying? Crying. Real men don't cry, Chuck. You've oh, heard that so often. Oh, yes, I have. <laughs> <laughs> I actually read an interesting statistic that uh, men cry more than women in movies, but they do not admit it. Yeah. <laughs> so we feel deeply, and, and, and that's so important to just emphasize. We as men feel deeply, yeah. but we process and grieve differently. We do. We do. And so crying is a natural reaction. Uh, so often as kids, you know, as children, we're told, you know, toughen up. Right. You know, suck it up, ignore it, move on, you know, uh, be a man. Right. And so what, a man doesn't have emotion? Apparently not mm. <laughs> in popular culture. And, and that's what's killing so many of us. It is. You know, um, there's something healing about the tears. It's almost like it's a release of, of toxins. I, I, I'm not a, a, a physician to really explain it, but um, there's something that you can, you can really tell when someone has an emotional experience to the point where the tears flow. The, and I encourage, 
guys, anyone, let the tears flow. And if it takes five minutes, 10 minutes, however long it takes, but once they've, those tears have been shed, you feel better. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the guys who will actually let the tears flow, will, they'll affirm that, that, you know, once, once I'm done with that, um, I do feel better now. But no man wants to cry too much. Right. So there's a, there needs to be a balance with that? There can be a inappropriate grieving uh, where, see, grieving is a process. It's a process of healing. And there, you come to a point where, you know, if you're grieving uh, appropriately, where you're able to then start moving on. Uh, there is a, a danger, though, if, if someone is just living in the grief and never really coming to the healing. And so uh, I counsel people, you know, really monitor your grief. You know, do you see progress? And it can take... I don't want to even put a, a time frame on it, but it can be a year, it can be more than a year for this process. But you need to be able to acknowledge that, yeah, things are getting better. I'm not there yet, but I see progress. And, and, and Chuck, we've been talking about loss, like the death of your father. Mm -hmm. uh, what about young men that may experience an absent father, a father that abandoned them. Right. And when they grieve, if they don't deal with that grief, what might happen? You know, studies have shown uh, with young men especially who get involved in, in gangs, uh, get involved in violent activities, that when uh, you know, trained grief counselors are able to work with them and start processing their life, you know, what, what did they have growing up? What's happened? In a vast majority of those cases, they've been able to tell that there was some point in their life where they experienced a significant loss, weren't able to deal with it appropriately, maybe didn't have a, a mentor, didn't have a counselor to help them with it, you know, did what they saw in the movies. You know, you, you stuff it, you hold it in. Mm. And... Uh, but you, like I said, it's a ticking time bomb. You can't stuff it and make it go away. It's always there. So, so with that holding in the grief and not processing it, some of these young men become violent. And they act out. They act out. They don't know why. They They're, just do it. They just do it. There's something inside of them that's not right. They don't know what it is. They don't know how to deal with it. And so it comes out as, as anger at the world. And it goes back to what you said earlier of a ticking time bomb. Yeah. And so grief needs to be addressed. When we're hurting, we need to figure it out. Yeah. Talk about it. Yeah. Get to it. Now, you've also talked a little bit about uh, moving past it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know you have a, a story about a close friend yes. that, uh, that you lost. Tell us about him. His name was Art. Uh, Art was uh, elder in, in one of the churches. I was a, a pastor at this church. Just a great, uh, great counselor, wise man. And uh, I moved on, but we kept in touch through the years. And uh, Art passed away. Um, I went to visit him about a week before he passed away. And what I would hear him tell his children uh, was it's okay to cry you know when I go it's okay to cry just not too much mm, and, very important yeah. point what he was telling them was there's a proper way to grieve and you heal through that proper way to grieve and then you move on he didn't want his family to be mourning him for years and years and years he wanted them to do it appropriately and move on well, he also told them, don't spend a lot of money, you know, planting me in the ground. <laughs> uh, you know, just a pine box, you know, just put me in the ground in a pine box. Well, they went to the, the funeral home and saw what it cost for just a plain pine box. And his son, Corey, said, 
we could build a better one than this for a lot less. See, Art was a woodworker. And he had trained uh, his kids, he had mentored his kids in the art of, of woodworking. So the sons all got together in Art's shop using his tools and they built a, it was a pine box, but it was cedar lined on the inside. And, and they took, they actually took hammers and bolted the hammers on the side of the, of the coffin to use for handles. <laughs> but what was happening when I got to the, to the funeral service, I thought, you know, these, these poor guys, you know, I need to, need to talk with them and help them process their grief. And as I was talking with them, I realized they've already done it. And so, Did they do it at the wood shop? Yeah, I asked them, you know, you guys seem to, you know, be doing pretty well with this. What, what happened? And they said, well, we were working on the, on the coffin. And they were doing this, you know, side by side. <laughs> but they started talking. About dad. About dad. All the, the fun things and, you know, they'd, they'd pick up a tool and they'd say, I remember when he taught me, you know, how to do this. And, and they would share all the fun memories and the ones that weren't so fun, but they got through them. And there was crying. I mean, they're working on this thing and they're just, the tears are flowing and they're, they're talking and they're but sharing they with each other. they were processing as men. They were processing as men. Mm. Yeah. And so while they were working together, sharing their stories, talking about their dad, they were crying grieving, together. They were grieving like men. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, grieving like men. That's that, right. So they created this very special box for their dad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Coffin. And they said, you know, when Jesus comes, dad's going to come up and he's going to look at this and he's going to say, who built this? This is a nice casket. <laughs> this is a nice casket. <laughs> So Art uh, equipped, he, he, he told them, yeah. cry, but not too much. Not too much. Keep it balanced. Yeah. And then working at the wood shop, they prepared a casket for him, and they processed yeah. the grief of losing their father. Yeah. So they made a memorial in a sort of way. They did. You know, they were, there's something about us guys that we have to, in processing, you know, if we're doing something, along with that, uh, well, I call them meaningful memorials. Meaningful memorials. There's a gentleman by the name of uh, Delane Forster, uh, who's a grief therapist from mm -hmm. Washington, D.C. And his specialty is helping families that have lost loved ones through murder. And after helping folks for so many years, his own brother was murdered. And so in, in talking and writing about his experience, he created a pond in his backyard dedicated to his brother, and he put a plaque in memory of his brother. And so he would go to the pond, and he would spend time there mm -hmm. and think and remember yes. his brother. Yes. And that's how he processed mm -hmm. the grief. In summing up what you would want the men to know, you said, think, right. let it out of the bag, mm -hmm. let it out of that compartment, bring it out of that concrete barrier. <laughs> Basically, recognize that it's there. Recognize that it's there. Yeah. And men hurt, men grieve right. deeply. We feel deeply. Yes. That's a fact I want our viewers to hear clearly. We do grieve deeply. <laughs> and so, think it through. You talked about learning how to process it. Mm -hmm. So getting books that help us with grief, right? understanding it, you know, like, like we would get a, a car manual. Sure. Okay. Now what else do we need to do? Uh, writing is good. Writing it out. Yeah, if, even if you don't enjoy writing, just putting something on paper, it's, it's an act, you're doing something to take that emotion from the inside and bring it to the outside. Okay. And then you said memorial, memorialize. Mm -hmm. And you talked about art, and right. how we could do that. I also read the story of a runner, uh, Chuck, you reminded me as you were sharing that, um, who was running a marathon in New York with his father. And his father had a heart attack and died while they were running the oh, same wow. marathon. 
because his father was behind him. And uh, he took his father's watch. And some time later, after he processed, he thought, he wrote, he understood his grief, he continued to run in marathons, but with his father's watch yeah. in honor of his father. Mm -hmm. And so what would you say to us in these closing few minutes uh, regarding grief as men? What, what, what's important to know? You know, I think the important thing for men is to recognize it's there, it's real, it's nothing to fear. And of course, we don't like the event that is associated with, but we don't fear the grief um, that we can process it, we can deal with it, and we can move on. Pastor Chuck has shared some important principles to help us through grief because every one of us at one point or another will face it. As men, we feel deeply but don't always process it correctly. Chuck demonstrated how we men often talk looking away and while our hands are occupied. Here are five points to remember. Number one, when grief sets in, acknowledge it. Don't stuff it. Recognize that it's there. Number two, process it. Learn how to process the grief. Consider reading up on it and learning more about it. Number three, express your thoughts. Write them out and remember that it's not for others to read, but for you to process. Talk with a friend, a pastor, or a Christian counselor. While you can't fix the hurt, you can live through it as others have. Number four, release it. The fourth step that Chuck shared gives us permission to weep. John 11 says that Jesus wept at the funeral of his friend Lazarus. If Jesus wept, then it's certainly okay for us to weep. And finally, number five, memorialize it. The final step will help us create a memorial that is meaningful to us. In the story of John Walsh, he took his rage to the street and has been fighting crime in honor of his son for years. The Bible says in Psalm 30, verse 5, that weeping may last for a night, but joy comes in the morning. We rest on the promise of God that he will never leave us or forsake us. God has promised us in the 23rd Psalm that when we walk through the valley of shadows and of death, we will fear no evil because God is with us. Never forget that God will never leave you or forsake you. I'm Pastor Minner Labrador. Thank you for joining us on Old Man, New Man.